here. I hope your day's going wonderful. I'm back again to share a project with you. Today we're making a not so typical sugar card. We're going to create a sugar card with a butterfly in it and we're using some new stickers at Spellbinders. Um, I know I know when Spellbinders had their car, uh, card kits, I loved when they included these stickers. These are, I have two different sets. I have the sunrise, but uh, the sunrise butterflies, and then I also have the twilight butterfly stickers. There's seven stickers in here. They're dimensional. They're light and airy, and they're they're almost like an image on vellum. You can see here. And I thought we would put this in a shaker card. And you're probably going, okay, how are you going to keep the flutter in the shaker card? Well, Spellbinders also has some of the. These are called puffy circles. They're from Waffle Flower. And let me bring in a cardstock sheet here. Now, these have um, dimension to them. Kind of hard to tell on camera. You see how it kind of has the dome shape? I thought we would put this with the butterfly in it and then put some, um, some confetti and sequins inside of it. I think that would make a really pretty elegant card. So that's what we're using. I'll link the, the butterflies and I think there's a few more sets too of butterflies. And also the Puffy Dome Spellbinder sells these. Um, and again these are from Waffle Flower. There's no adhesive to them so you have to add your own adhesive. But never tried them. I don't know how envelope friendly they are. We'll try putting it in an envelope when we're done. Um, but I thought it'd be something different, okay? So let's, first of all, create our card base. I'm gonna put these over here. My card base today, I wanna use lavender cardstock, and I do wanna do background stamping on here. Um, so let's, let's do that first. The background stamp that I'm gonna use is from Simon Says Stamp and it is called Overlapping Drops. Kind of reminded me of little butterfly wings if you put it sideways. So I thought we would stamp this. I'm going to stamp it with my black ink. I'm just going to use Memento because it dries pretty fast. And I'm going to ink this up. I've been using a lot of background stamps lately and I just love the effect. Sometimes I go on an embossing folder craze or a stencil craze. This month I've been doing a lot of background stamping. Okay, we'll put this on here. I'm going to grab my brayer and I'm going to press down. And I'm not worried about the back side because this is actually going to be our card front panel. Just want to make sure I have a good impression. Okay. I think that looks very fun. Background stamps. I'm going to do a little ink blending on the edges. I want a dark ink. And so I'm bringing in my Pink Fresh Studio ink. This is Opulence. I'm bringing in my blending brush. And we're going to ink the edges. This is actually a dark lavender or dark purple. And so those edges are really going to pop. So you can see here, kind of creates a nice little effect. I'm going to go around the entire background with this ink. Usually I only do this around Halloween because it creates a real pretty Halloween card, but look how this just glows. I mean, really pretty. Okay, I'm going to clean off my work surface, and then we're going to die cut out some circles. Okay, I have my everlasting circles here. And I'm bringing in my dome that we're going to use. And we're going to find one that will fit this. Maybe, I think that one will work out perfect too small. So this one will work out perfect. Okay, I'm going to take a piece of dark, well, let's actually take the same cardstock. I'll take the same color cardstock. I'll die cut this out and I want to create a frame with it. So let's take 
I'm going to skip one size and I'm going to create a frame with this. And I'm going to use the inside one. And I will add a slightly wider circle, a slightly wider donut. And then I'm going to do the same thing once more with plum cardstock. You see how we're gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I have all my circles die cut. So the inside circle is all the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and layer all three of these together right now to create my frame. Sometimes when you do this, um, well, at least sometimes when I do this, my circles aren't the straightest. I just want to make sure that they all line up. I also die cut out a piece of acetate, not using this die, but using a die that matched the size of this. I thought we'd make a, sh a seafood sh a seafood shaker. <laughs> I'm a little hungry today. <laughs> um, crazy little shrimp. <laughs> a little see-through shaker, okay? So we're going to put this to the side, <laughs> and then we're going to um, create a window in this panel. Now what I'm going to do is take my card base and then I'm going to open it up and I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. I'm just going to glue it down here on the edges. Okay, I'm going to add some glue behind here. I'm going to tack this down to the front of my card base. Now, um, both the Spellbinders cardstock and my card base cardstocks are very thick. So I may have to run this through a couple of times. And you can see my card base is off. Let me see. Okay. I don't know if my panel's off or my card base, but no worries. You just trim away the excess. So this is my card base. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to kind of place where I want the window on my panel here. And I'm thinking I want it a little bit towards the top. I think that's good because I think I'm going to add flowers to this. This looks good. I'm going to run this through. I'm going to add a little tape just so I don't want it to move. And I'm going to run this through probably a couple of times. Maybe add a paper shim over the top um, to get it to cut through both cardstocks. I'll be right back. Okay, I actually didn't need the paper shim. So we did good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this away. Okay, let's go ahead and glue down my acetate. I'm going to go around here. Okay, we'll add our flat one. It's oozing out just a little bit. I'm, I'm oozing out a little bit, so just adding a little bit of alcohol. Have you ever tried these? This works so nice. It's continuous. So you just barely press on it and it continues. Watch. Pretty cool, huh? Just love that. Alcohol will work perfect. So I'll flip this over and I'm just going to clean my acetate. I have two of these. I have one with alcohol and then one with water. They work really good. And I was wondering if I could put olive oil in one, <laughs> one but I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> See, I told you food was on my mind. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to clean the top off, too. We'll clean the top off, too. Okay. I think we're good. Now... Okay. Let's see. Let's pick a butterfly. So much fun. I don't want one that's too big.
ideally I think this purple one would be so pretty, but it kind of smashes a little bit. So I think we're going to go with this one. Let's see. I'm actually going to cut it out. Just in case I don't want to use it, I didn't remove it from the release paper. Okay, so I trimmed it away from the packaging just so I could sample what it's going to look like. That's the best thing. You can sample. I think that may be a little small. Maybe we'll try the bigger one. Okay. The bigger one kind of smashes it a little bit. But I think the bigger one's just going to work out better. Don't you think? I'm going to put some flowers over here. So I think this is going to work out good. So we're going to use the big one. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add my butterfly. I'm just going to remove it here. The back's going to be pretty too on that acetate. I'm going to center it. I'm bringing in my Spellbinders Prism Gems. Gosh, these are so pretty. These have a blue iridescent tint to them. And I'm going to fill in the butterfly body. I love doing this with butterfly bodies. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Okay, the back side doesn't look bad at all if you open it up. Okay, let's put this to the side. I'm getting excited about this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my dome. I'm going to flip it upside down. Now we're going to fill it. I had created a video where I sh shared with you these um, little jars. And I thought we would add some seed beads. Not too many. These will probably sink to the bottom. But I wanted the shake. You can hear them. Okay, and then these, I thought were glass beads, but you know what? They're so light and airy. This here is like little plastic tubes. Love that. And then these are iridescent glitter flakes. I'm going to add some of that too. And I'm going to add some different seed beads. These ones have like a clear silvery look to them. We'll add a little bit more. We're just going to fill this up. Okay, and then I'm going to card back to my shaker carefully. Ideally, what you would have wanted to do, let's tack this down, is wait um, with the clear acetate. I put it on the card front. Ideally, you should have um, waited and just made it a portable shaker and then adhered it. I think that would have been better, but either way. Okay, secure this really good. Oh, yes, looks like jewels in there. Really does look neat. And you can hear the shake. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and add our frame now. Cover up all that glue. And just tack this down. Give it a second to adhere. While this adheres, actually I'm going to clamp it. I have some of my Spellbinders clothespins. These were on sale with the Spring Warehouse sale. Maybe some of you got them. They're really handy, but since we're gluing on acetate, I'm going to secure my frame. And while that's drying, I went ahead and we're going to go ahead and create some flowers. Um, but I love these flowers. These are from Wendy Vecchi's. It's a vintage floral um, die set. And I'm just going to die cut out a few leaves and some flowers. Maybe the flower bed too. I went, to I went ahead and put together my flowers. And I'm going to go ahead and layer my hello on my vellum. Wonderful. I think I'm going to ink up the edges too. And I think I'm going to ink up the edges of the, the leaves with my purple ink. I'm going to use whatever's left over from my purple ink. I 
If you guys have want a beautiful leaf color, add purple to your, your die cut leaves. It turns like a charcoaly gray, maybe an olivey gray. So pretty. You can see there. I'm gonna add a little bit of color here too. Okay. I add a little to my flowers too. Okay, there we go. That's, I think that's gonna work out great. Okay, you ready to open it up? This looks so neat. It's hard to tell on camera, but you have that iridescence to it. It's like a present. <laughs> Those would be great for Christmas. Okay, I'm going to take my... Um, Let's go ahead and add our florals or our greenery. Okay, for finishing touches, I tied a double bow with some white twine. And I'm going to put it right here so it's on my frame, but just between the flower and my flower beds. I think that looks really pretty. Let me trim, trim these a little bit more. And then I'm going to also bring in some more of those prism gems. Beautiful. Okay, that finishes my card today. This is a unique puffy shaped shaker card. Oh, I promised you we'd check out an envelope. Let me go grab an envelope and we'll see how envelope friendly this is. Okay, I have one of Simon's metallic envelopes. It's one of my samples, so it's kind of beat up a little bit, but, um, <laughs> but I think it'll do the job. Okay, I have a piece of cardstock. This is just a lightweight piece of cardstock. I always like to cover my cards when you put them in the envelope because I have so much dimension. Okay, it's nice and it's nice and snug in there. You can see the bulk. Okay, um, but when you close it, let me see. There, there is a little bulk, and it does. Well, I guess it kind of smushes a little bit. You definitely have to probably pay extra postage. Not for the weight, but for the bulk. But I think it's pretty much envelope friendly. So that makes it really nice. Nice thing is, is your dome will help protect your other stuff. <laughs> but that's my card today. Fun puffy shaped shaker card. It did kind of dent a little bit, but that doesn't hurt the design with the butterfly in it. <laughs> I'll link everything down below if you guys want to head on over and check it out. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you guys are interested in another video where I use this flower set, um, I'll link it at the end here. You can check that out. Have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <music>